This is Taiwan Insider, a weekly news roundup brought to you by Radio Taiwan International. Every week we give you an inside look at the biggest and most interesting stories coming out of Taiwan. I'm Natalie So. And I'm Andrew Ryan, and here's your week in a minute. President Tsai says Hong Kong protesters' demands to scrap an extradition bill are, quote, justifiable. She was speaking Tuesday, the day after protesters occupied the Hong Kong legislature. Hong Kong democracy activist Joshua Wong has held a video conference with members of the ruling DPP. He says Taiwan and Hong Kong should join in the fight for freedom and democracy. A flight attendant strike at Taiwan's EVA Air enters day 15. It's estimated over 400,000 passengers have been affected by cancelled flights, setting a new record for Taiwan's transportation industry. President Tsai will visit four of Taiwan's Caribbean allies from July 11th to 22nd. She will stop over for a total of four nights in the U.S. on her way to and from Taiwan, despite objections from China. Taiwan is free of foot and mouth disease, with no need for vaccination. The announcement Monday paves the way for the first Taiwanese pork exports in more than two decades, as early as next year. Stricter drunk driving laws went into effect on July 1st. More than 300 people have been fined, including passengers. And that's your Week in a Minute. Every week at the top of the show, we each come up with a word of the week that we think describes the news this week. Mm. Andrew, are you ready to guess my word? Yes, what do you have? All right. C, co, Coca-Cola, con, control, con, counter, contest. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Way off. <laughs> okay, so we are in the midst of the biggest contest in Taiwan, who will be the next president. And we'll be telling you about the presidential primaries in our show. Also, there's a big contest of wills in Hong Kong between mm. the people and China. And that's having a big impact here in Taiwan. That's right. Big protests in Hong Kong. All right. Are you ready for my word, Natalie? Yes. All right. Let's see, what do we have here? W. Whatever, no. <laughs> <laughs> Whirlwind? Yes. Ooh. You know, we've been doing this show for how long now? Probably about close to 20 weeks. Uh -huh. uh, and every week it seems like there's a whole whirlwind of news. Many things happening. Uh, it's hard to keep up sometimes, especially weeks like this week when we have the protests in Hong Kong. We have a very different domestic uh, news situation here with the primaries and the KMT and of course we're getting close to the elections in Taiwan and we saw this past week we actually had a literal whirlwind. Yes we're seeing we'll be seeing photos of that. Yes. Very very dramatic photos. That's right. So right. Um, also coming up in today's show a primer on the primaries. Um, we'll be telling you about some of the new ways that the political parties are choosing their presidential candidates. Also we check out a newly reopened uh, path at the beautiful Taroko Gorge. And also we look at some new interesting laws that just took effect here in Taiwan on July 1st. Plus, have a look at this photo. That's the whirlwind. Yes, it Tornado, is. Tornado, actually. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so where is this? Just a little hint, we're not in Kansas anymore. And we're gonna have that answer for you at the end of our show in our parting shot. And now we turn to our top story. In just six months, Taiwan will choose its next president. And the opposition is on the verge of choosing their candidate. Now, um, this person will run against President Tsai Ing-wen. That's right. And all of this is unfolding against the backdrop of the protests in Hong Kong, which people say are having an effect on the primaries. Protesters smashed into Hong Kong's Legislative Council building on Monday. They occupied and vandalized the building, desperate to show their opposition against an extradition bill they fear would threaten civil liberties. Police fired tear gas at the protesters just after they had decided to leave the building after occupying it for three hours. All of this happened as Hong Kong marked the 22nd anniversary of its handover to China. Now, some pundits have compared this escalation of the Hong Kong protest to Taiwan Sunflower Movement in 2014, when students occupied the legislature to protest a trade pact with China. Now, President Tsai said the Hong Kong people's demands for democracy are justifiable. Some also say the Hong Kong protest helped her win the party's primary last month, as she faced a strong contender from her own party. Today, we're going to look at how Taiwan is choosing its presidential candidates for this key election. That's the topic of today's Taiwan Explained. 
In today's Taiwan Explained, I'm going to explain how Taiwan's political parties are choosing their presidential candidates. All right, Natalie, we have one minute on the clock. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, go. This time is the first time that both major parties are using polls to choose their presidential candidates. Now, the DPP began using public polls in 2011. Before that, party members had a big say. And the KMT is using polls for the first time before the party decided the candidate. Now, the DPP is also using mobile phone polls for the first time to gather half their surveys. This is thought to reach out to younger voters. And in the polls, they put the two contenders against two other candidates, and President Tsai Ing-wen came out first over William Lai. Now, the KMT will begin their polls on July 8th, and we'll know the results by July 15th. They're using landlines, and they will ask people to select a candidate among the KMT hopefuls, and also to choose between a KMT candidate and other candidates. Now, the KMT candidates are NTU Professor Zhang Yazhong, former Taipei County Chief Zhou Xi Wei, former New Taipei City Mayor Eric Chu, Kaohsiung Mayor Han Guoyu, and Foxconn founder Terry Go. <laughs> I think I made it, huh? <laughs> I think we'll let you have this one. So that's it for today's Taiwan Explained. Now let's take a closer look at the KMT frontrunners. Now one of the top contenders from the KMT is Foxconn founder Terry Guo. Guo is the founder and former CEO of the company that makes iPhones. His company employs over a million people, and he is one of the wealthiest tycoons in Taiwan. But some people are wary of his business interests in China, where the largest Foxconn factories are located. Another top contender is Kaohsiung Mayor Han Guoyu. Now he is a new star of the Kuomintang and just became mayor six months ago. He has a very loyal fan base, but some people are wary of his ties to China because the China-backed media in Taiwan gave him a lot of coverage. Also, about 30,000 Kaohsiung residents are moving for a recall because they say he's neglecting his duties as mayor by running for president. And the third top contender is former new Taipei City Mayor Eric Zhu. Now, he is seen as the traditional KMT candidate, the establishment candidate. He was a popular two-term mayor of New Taipei City, but he also was the party's presidential candidate in the last election. And that means that if he wins this primary, he will be facing off again against Tsai Ing-wen. Now, the KMT candidates just finished their televised policy forums, and a big issue is their cross-strait policy. Now, recently, I spoke with political analyst Courtney Donovan-Smith about the top contenders and their cross-strait policies. This is what he had to say. These three are the, the, the more, more closer to the traditional or the more recent era KMT uh, cross-strait sort of policies, which are try to keep good relations with the United States, but improve relations further with, with China. Um, Eric Chu has very specifically, Julie Luen has talked about trying to sign an agreement, a peace agreement, not a treaty, uh, mm -hmm. because that would be between two countries, uh, an agreement uh, on Jim Mun. Uh, all three of these candidates are talking about increasing peace, um, all are pretty clearly against one country, two systems. Um, and so in terms of what they state publicly, there's not a radical difference between the three of them. Um, the question has a lot to do with the, what the voters perceive or think that's what's going on under the surface and their own interests uh, these, of these mm. three candidates, interests in China, what relationships do they have in China? Han Guoyu uh, had, had some education in China. Uh, he had, wrote his thesis on the United Front. So there's some concerns on the national security side there. Terry Goh's massive... Interest in China. His whole business is yes, and something basically to keep in there. Mind, and something to keep in mind is that in China, you'll notice that almost all the top flying business people in China, which includes him, a lot of them recently have been jailed for corruption. They have been exiled or fled the country. They've been forced to step down. I think Jack Ma recently stepped down. Um, uh, and because you can't rise to the top in China as, as a businessman on that scale without being deeply 
or have very strong ties with the Chinese Communist Party, or at least to maintain it these mm. days. So that's a concern. Definitely. Um, yeah. Obviously, Eric Chu is much more a traditional politician here. What's going on? Uh, he has family ties with, with China. Once again, that was political analyst Courtney Donovan Smith. And for the entire interview and all of his views on the KMT candidates, you can check out the Taiwan Today playlist on the RTI English YouTube channel. Up next, hashtag Taiwan. This week on Hashtag Taiwan, RTI social media guru Leslie Liao joins us to tell us what's trending in Taiwan. Hey, Leslie. Hey, Leslie. Hey, guys. So this week, uh, Leslie, you're going to be telling us what people are saying about the escalation of protests in Hong Kong. That's right. So there was a moment on Monday night that went viral where protesters were forcibly dragged out from the Hong Kong's legislative body, also known as LegCo. Now, South China Morning Post reporter Jeffy Lam tweeted a photo of protesters returning to LegCo to forcibly remove other demonstrators who were determined to stay. They said, we should leave together, leave no one behind. Now, Lam also notes just how young some of the protesters are. Now, the moment caught the world's attention and people in Taiwan took note. That's right. Tricky Taipei tweets, can't tell you how young they are because of the hard hats and face masks, but half the people in the picture are women. Now, Hong Kong illustrator John Ho was moved to create a design or a drawing based on that moment, and he said that he was inspired by the movie Roma. The picture posted to Instagram says, Safety first, thank you to the rescuers. We understand but also respect your, your frustration. If we leave, we leave together. And more support for Hong Kong came from Taiwan even as events unfolded. Reporter William Yang tweets, protesters continue to arrive at the scene where a makeshift message wall has been set up. Scrawled along the top of the dry erase board are the words, Taiwanese people stand with Hong Kongers. Now support didn't just come from the public, it also came from President Tsai Ing-wen. She tweets, as president of a country that walked the long road to democracy, I urge the Hong Kong government to address the legitimate concerns of the people and the pursuit of freedom and democracy. And people in Hong Kong thanked President Tsai for her support. Hong Kong pro-democracy leader Joshua Wong says, thank you, President Tsai. Hong Kong and Taiwan must continue to stand together to resist the threat of China. Well, thank you, Leslie. Yes, thank you. And that is this week's Hashtag Taiwan. Be sure to follow us on social media and leave a comment. We would love to hear from you. It's hard to believe we're already halfway through 2019. Now some new laws came into effect on July 1st. Let's take a look. Now don't drink and cycle. You could get hurt and get fined. And now the next one is also about being under the influence of alcohol. But it's not for the driver, it's for the passengers. If you ride in a car driven by a drunk driver, you could also be fined. And in fact, some people have already be, been fined for that this week. And the next is for people who take the bus in Taipei or New Taipei City. You must swipe your easy card on your way on and off the bus. The next one is for all drivers, and that includes people who are on scooters and motorcycles. You must yield to the visually impaired and specifically anyone with a white cane or a guide dog. And the government is trying to wean us off plastic straws. They are now banned in four venues for in-house drinks. These include fast food chains, shopping centers, schools, and government agencies. And this last one here is for bank customers. So most branches of Taiwan's eight public banks will close at 3.30 p.m. You want to make sure that you get there on time. Now to our next segment, Taiwan by Number. Each week in Taiwan by Number, we share with you a facet of life in Taiwan by way of some digits. Now this week, Natalie, we're going to be talking about one of the most beautiful scenic spots in all of Taiwan. That's right. Taroko Gorge. And, uh, you know, I want you to picture this. So we've got dramatic cliffs tumbling down into the sea. We've got uh, this gorgeous, dare I say, gorgeous gorge, which was carved into the marble by years of flowing rivers. Mm. Uh, so, Natalie, the question that I have for you this week to start off with is, how deep is Taroko Gorge? Oh, wow. Um, 200 meters? 
<laughs> I have no idea. No, that's probably too high. But it's a good guess, uh, and we're going to have the answer for you in just a moment. But first, you actually did a report this week about the Tunnel of Nine Turns, which recently reopened in Taroko Gorge after six years of construction. Let's have a look. Taroko Gorge is one of Taiwan's most beautiful destinations. One highlight is the Tunnel of Nine Turns, right above the Liwu River. A Taroko National Park guide is happy to show visitors around. One visitor says it's been too long since he's been here. Another says Taiwan has world-class scenery. The walk through the Tunnel of Nine Turns is 700 meters. There are three arch-shaped cement tunnels that have flowers carved on them. It takes less than 30 minutes to walk the entire trail and back. This path used to be a part of the Central Cross Island Highway, but was later made into a scenic pedestrian path. It's a must-see destination for tourists. Falling rocks led to its closing for six years. Park official Chen Bao Wang said that the Ming Tunnel was added during reconstruction, so now people don't need to wear a helmet. The chances of falling rocks are very slim. Visitors to Hualien can now enjoy a stroll through the new Tunnel of Nine Turns Path. All right, Natalie. So before the video, I asked you how deep is Taroko Gorge? That's right. You said 200 meters. That's right. <laughs> and the answer is? Oh, wow. <laughs> Man, that's really deep. Yeah. That's like two Taipei 101s, right? Yes, that's right. It's We've been more talking a lot than... about heights lately, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. That's really deep. That's cool. It's pretty impressive. When you're actually in there, you can really feel how just incredibly wow. tall those mountains are. You don't want to fall down. No, Taroko Gorge. you don't. Now, Nally, I looked in, into Taroko Gorge a little bit. I wanted to give you a little bit of a quiz. Sure. Are you ready? Try me. Okay. I probably get everything wrong, but <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> that's okay. So Taroko Gorge, of course, has been around for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, it gets its name from the local Druku people. Um, something that's a little bit newer, comparatively, is the Taroko Gorge National Park. When was the park founded? Uh, 80 years ago. 80 years ago, so you're saying, what's my math? Give me a oh, year. Oh, let's just say uh, 19, <laughs> uh, oh, let's say 1936. 1936, okay, let's have a look at the answer. <laughs> oh my gosh! You're so this. close, I'm so impressed, <laughs> Natalie. So the park was actually founded in 1937 during the Japanese occupation. Oh. What's interesting though, is that after the Japanese left in 1945, uh, the Republic of China actually abolished the national park. Oh and didn't reestablish it again until 1986. Interesting. Fascinating, huh? Now, the first road in Taiwan to bisect the island from east to west actually travels right through the Taroko Gorge, and that is the Central Cross Island Highway. How long is the Central Cross Island Highway? Where does it go? From it, east of west to Taiwan? Yes. <laughs> I have no idea, oh my gosh. 200 kilometers? All right, let's, <laughs> I don't know. let's have a look Wild at the answer. <laughs> now you're oh killing my gosh. it. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's pretty close. That is closer than I thought. Yeah. She's doing very well today. I think she might have been peeking at the answers. <laughs> no, no, right, she doesn't. Today. I know. We keep them very I'm secret. Honest. So now this actually took four years to complete, it was completed in 1960. They also built a shrine at the entrance to the Central Cross Island Highway. And that was to honor uh, the military veterans who died during the construction of the highway. How many people does that shrine honor? 150. Let's have a look at the answer. Oh, wow. It took four years to build that and 226 died. people died during the building of that uh, construction of that, uh, that road. Now, as you saw there, that was the beautiful Eternal Spring Shrine, and it's called that because of the water that goes through it, the, the waterfall, which is eternally flowing. Now, uh, national, this national park is also full of life. It's just teeming with flora and fauna. I want to ask you, this is a tough one, how many unique species of fauna have been recorded in the Taroko Gorge National Park? Oh, wow. Forty? Forty? That's too many, right? No, more. Oh. <laughs> 120? All right, let's have a look at the answer. <laughs> guess. Oh, my gosh. 1,554. <laughs> That's awesome. And this is actually one of the That's endemic amazing. species 
This uh, is the Multrex frog, which is it's one beautiful. of 53 endemic species to national. I love that green, that color. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's amazing. All right. Uh, let's see. I have another two questions for you. Of the tallest 100 mountains in Taiwan, the so-called Bai Yue, which are mostly over 3,000 meters tall, how many of those 100 are located in uh, Taroko Gorge National Park? Ten. Ten. Okay. Let's have a look at the answer. Oh, wow, so many. Yeah, look at that beautiful one there. And that actually uh, is the east peak of He Huan Shan. So, He Huan, uh, so he Huan Mountain. It's beautiful. And that's the uh, sunset that you could see there. I have one final question for you, Natalie. All right, these are all hard questions. This one's uh, maybe easier or harder, depending. <laughs> okay, so you told us about the Tunnel of Nine Turns, which recently reopened uh, just last week. Uh, how many turns does the Tunnel of Nine Turns have? It's, it's got to be nine, right? It's a good guess. It's a trick question. It's not nine. Let's have a look at the answer. <laughs> a lot. What? <laughs> okay. So this is actually very important because whenever you see nine in a place name in Mandarin Chinese, it actually means a lot, not... Oh, like Joe. I mean, it means a long time. Yes. So it's not literally nine... Turns. That's right. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So when you see bridge of nine turns, tunnel of nine turns, uh -huh. there may or may not actually be nine turns. It's a poetic way of saying a lot. <laughs> exactly. And that's this week's Taiwan by Number. And finally, today we leave you with our parting shot. Now, at the beginning of our program, we showed you a photo and asked if you knew where it was. Let's have a look again at that photo. Wow, it looks like a scene from a movie, but it's from here in Taiwan. Where in Taiwan is this? Well, let's take a look at this video. This is an image of a rare tornado that hit Pingdong County in southern Taiwan on Monday afternoon, and we have some shocking footage of the twister. You can see that motorcycles don't stand a chance. They're tossed around like toys. The tornado lasted for about four minutes, toppling several vehicles, including a three and a half ton truck. It tore through houses, leaving wow. the local residents in shock. It even oh passed through one village twice. You see the guy is holding onto the windowsill there. Look how big that is. Yeah. And meteorologists say the tornado was caused by heat and low pressure in the waters off southern Taiwan, forming strong convection currents. In its aftermath, over 7,000 households were left without electricity, and nine people suffered minor injuries. Eighty soldiers were sent in to help out with cleanup Fortunately, no one was killed and electricity was restored after a day. Wow, it's really incredible, isn't it? I can't believe that happened in Taiwan. I never saw a tornado before. I know. You know, I grew up in Tornado Valley in the U.S. and this is something we're used to there, but I never thought we would see it here in Taiwan. It's incredible. Well, we hope you enjoyed this inside look at Taiwan this week. Be sure to connect with us on social media and leave a comment below. Yes, we'd love to hear from you and also check out our show notes. We have some links to the things we discussed today. For Taiwan Insider, I am Natalie So. And I'm Andrew Ryan. See you next week.